Hello. Today we'll be talking about herpes zoster, which is also commonly referred to as shingles. So shingles is caused by a varicella zoster virus and it's transmitted via respiratory droplets. So what are the risk factors for acquiring herpes zoster? So basically herpes zoster, we see that it's caused by what varicella zoster virus, right? So herpes zoster is usually an infection that arises as a result of reactivation of varicella zoster virus, okay? And this reactivation, it typically occurs in the immunocompromised. So what can lead to the immunocompromised state? So it could be due to advancing age, malignancy, HIV infection, immunosuppressive therapy, malnutrition, chronic stress. So the pathophysiology of varicella zoster or herpes zoster infection is so, the first thing is there's a primary infection, then there's the reactivation. So primary infection results in chicken pox, okay? So this usually arises as a result of respiratory transmission. So what happens is varicella zoster virus, it inoculates into the lymphoid tissue of the nasopharynx and the regional lymphoid tissue. So from there, what happens is this virus spread into the blood and that's when we get chicken pox, okay? So chicken pox, then there's a recovery from chicken pox, but then what happens to the virus is that it remains dormant in the dorsal root ganglia. Okay, so this is what happens in chicken pox. So what happens in the reactivation? So usually when there's an immunocompromised state, so varicella zoster virus is reactivated. This happens often many years after the primary infection. So what happens is the virus replicates in the dorsal root ganglia. It travels through the peripheral sensory nerves to the skin and it leads to shingles, okay? And shingles is less contagious than primary infection. So as we know, chickenpox is very contagious. Shingles is relatively less contagious, okay? So what are the symptoms of varicella of herpes zoster? So there's pain, and there's a erythematous macular papular rash that evolves into vesicular lesions. So initially it starts as erythematous macular papular rash, and later it evolves into vesicular lesions. These are the characteristic symptoms, okay? Then other symptoms a patient will present will include fever, headache, paresthesia, itching, and really they may also have motor deficits. So diagnosis, so clinical presentation is usually sufficient. However, we can do PCR or varicella zoster virus DNA. We can get the fluid for PCR from the vesicles, okay? Then there are also antibodies testing where we can do IgG or IgM, okay? IgM antibodies. So treatment is we usually give antiviral therapy. So you can give acyclovir, valacyclovir, or famcyclovir. Then we also need to give supportive therapy. Remember we said pain is a symptom, but we need to give analgesia. So analgesia, we follow the WHO pain ladder. So we start with paracetamol. If that doesn't help, we escalate to NSAIDs. If those do not help, then we go to opioids. Then we also need to do infectious infection control. So we said that shingles or, or herpes zoster, it's less contagious than chickenpox. However, it is still contagious. So we still prefer that patients stay in relative isolation, okay? So complications of shingles include herpes zoster encephalitis, post herpetic neuralgia. So this is basically where the region where the rash was, the patient presents with pain in that area even after the rash is gone, okay? Then really they may also present with facial nerve palsy. So this was my reference site. And that's all about shingles, thank you.